that somehow become almost an image of we the church sometimes? Instead of facing the situation out there that with the power of God, it's just so much easier to sit down and put our head between our knees and say, oh, well. You see, the entire book of Acts is not just written so we have the history of the early church. That's not why it's written. The book of Acts is written so we can understand what God can do with ordinary people, people just like you, people just like me, congregations just like us, what God can do in the strangest of times when people yield their lives to God and open their hearts to what God is willing and wanting to do within us. God is expecting great things from this church. He is expecting it. Not wishing for it, not hoping for it, but expecting great things from this church. And great things always happen when we let go of the power control. And when God takes over, God is expecting great things out of your life and my life. And he's still waiting on some of us to let go and to let him flip that switch and let the power begin to flow. Do you still believe that we can have a revival in our land? Do we still believe that God can come in the midst of a nation that is as mixed up as we have become, that God can still come and work a great and mighty and powerful renewal of life and set us right again. You see, in the book of Acts, it reminds us that it takes power and it takes courage and it takes steadfastness to stand up for God and the culture is so different than, than Christians believe. Lest we become a part of the culture, and lest the culture begins to tell the church how it's to run its life, it's time for us to come back to the power of God. And remember that it is God's church, we are God's people, and it is God, it is God and only God who tells us what he expects from the people of God. And in the book of Acts, it takes a lot of courage to be faithful to what we know is likely to be unpopular. It takes a lot of power to be faithful when we know it could very well even get you in trouble. But we also notice something in the book of Acts about this great power that no matter how many people and how many other things come against the people of God and the church, it keeps on growing. It keeps on. Because deep down in a lot of our hearts, we still remember that our God is an awesome God. He is in heaven and on earth. In this book, we see the, what God can do with ordinary lives. In today's text, we have Paul and Luke and others who have come to minister in a new territory. They've come to a people they've never known before. And when they come into the community, the first thing they look for is a place of prayer. The first thing that they look for is a place of prayer. 
I love the way King James puts it. They went to the river where prayer was wont to be found. They went to the river where prayer was wont to be found. Because it was understood if there were any worshipers at all of Almighty God, and if there were no synagogues, that those few worshipers would gather at the river. They would have loved the song, Shout, We Gather at the River. They would gather for prayer, and that's where Paul and his friends went. And there they found women. We don't know if any men were there or not, but we know there were women there. And the Bible tells us that they sat down with the women, and Paul began to teach them. Now, what did he teach them? Obviously, he taught them about Jesus. There's only one time that Paul didn't speak about Jesus, and that was on Mars Hill in Athens. And there's only one time in the Bible where Paul did not get very good results, and that was on Mars Hill in Athens. And after that, he said, I'm determined one thing, one thing, I am determined one thing, Never again will I speak anything else but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Because that's where the power is. And it might be good for us as a church to remember that. I've gone to pastor's meetings where I never even heard the name of Jesus mentioned. We were so busy talking about other things we were doing. The power's in the name, in the person. In the life of Jesus Christ. You see, it is Jesus who has the power to change not only things, but he has the power to change lives. And when he changes lives, things are going to change also. We're so busy trying to change things that we have forgotten that Jesus died on the cross to save souls, to change lives. And the women listened as Paul spoke. And today's text says that the Lord, not anyone else, but the Lord opened the heart of Lydia and she received this glorious gospel. It's always the Lord who opens the heart, no one else. And the Lord opened her heart. But you see, all of this would never have happened had it not been first that God's people were looking for a place of prayer. I need to pray. I need to be with praying people. I need to be with people who share the same love of God. <clears throat> well, you see, Lydia and, and those women, they were Gentiles. They were considered God-fearers, people who loved the God of Abraham, worshipped the God of Abraham, even though they could not be a part of that faith. They still loved. They had never heard about Jesus. And now they were hearing Jesus for the very first time. Jesus who loves us. Jesus who died on a cross for us. Jesus who raised from the dead so that we might have life everlasting. Jesus, Jesus, there's something powerful about that name. And the Lord opened her heart and she raised her hand. She said, I want him. I want to know this Jesus that I don't have to worship only from a distance, but I want to know this Jesus who takes me into the family, who makes me a part of it all, who gives me power. And she would never have had that opportunity had they first not sought out a place of prayer. You find an interesting thing in the places of prayer in the book of Acts. Of all things, it is God who controls the prayer meeting. In 
isn't that a rare thing? A new thing. But shouldn't it be the way that it is? They didn't show up with their list to say, Oh my God, this is what's on the agenda today. It's good to have our list. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying it's far better, far better to come into his presence and let God control the time of prayer and the moment. It's an interesting thing when we pray the Lord's Prayer that long before we ask for daily bread, we first pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done. We meet you here in this place of prayer, O oh Lord. What do you want of us today? What are your plans? Do you ever wake up in the morning and open your eyes and say something that sounds like, well, Lord, what do we want to do today? What's your plan for today? Well, today, I'm going to meet a woman named Lydia, and I'm going to come into her heart when you go to the place of prayer. My, how we benefited from that meeting. When Lydia was converted, the Bible says her entire household was converted. They were all saved. May God give us back that day. When mom or dad have such an influence at home that everyone will watch and if they say Jesus Christ is good enough for me and then all the children and the family and everyone else says if he's good enough for you he's good enough for me. If you believe in him that much then I want to believe in him too. God give us back those days. When the faith that we have is contagious in the home and in the community and even in the life of the church. There's power in prayer. There's power in that name. There's power in the word of God. I read of a man who had a favorite New Testament. He had worn it out. The binding was about to fall off of it. Instead of buying a new one, he wanted to keep this one. So he sent it to a binder who, who, who put a new binding on it. And when he came to the place where it said the New Testament, he just could not make the letters fit. There was just no way to write the New Testament and it looked right. So he turned it on its side and he wrote these three letters T N T. Well, you get it? This is pure dynamite. This is the powerful Word of God. Brothers and sisters, whether you're here in the church or those who are watching, our mandate is still the same. That is the one that has come from God. To go with all the world. To preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it takes an upside down world and it turns it right side up. The mandate is still the same. The master is still the same. He hasn't changed. He who told us to do these things hasn't come back and said, I didn't know there was going to be a pandemic and this back off. He did not. And in the midst of the pandemic, he says, you keep going. 
You keep believing. You keep trusting. God is bigger than this. He would say to many of us, let's stop our whining. We were called for things greater than this. This is our opportunity. If it's dark, then it's our opportunity to let our light shine. If the world is troubled, it's our opportunity to show that you can have peace that passes all understanding. If everyone is talking about their feeling of hopelessness, it's our opportunity to say, oh, no, not at all. Nothing is hopeless. Nothing at all. When you walk with God, power. The power is here. You see those women, they knew God, but they had yet to know Jesus. And on that day, they found the switch for a water takeoff. In fact, they were baptized. Their life was changed. Lydia made her home a place where the disciples, where they could work from. Her home became a church and a movement. Well, you see, she was the very first convert in Europe. What would have happened at Paul? And his friends skipped out on prayer meeting that day. What would have happened had they said, we just don't have time today. There's too much to do. And I'm telling you, as I believe the authority of God is speaking to us today, all of us, we haven't yet even begun to know God wants to do with us. It was Joshua who said, you choose today whom you will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's where it begins. Each one of us today, personally, we choose. God, I want more of you. I want more of you. Touch me again. Feel me with your power. The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Closing him so appropriately as I sing the Almighty Power of God. The words will be on the screen.
blessings, wonderful blessings of God the Father Almighty be upon you. The love of Jesus Christ our Lord wrap his arms around you by faith and the power the everlasting almighty power of God through his Holy Spirit fill your heart and soul. Hallelujah.